Gentlemen, this is Pastor Wayne Voss, and this is the Tuesday Morning Trumpet. And as always, I'm thrilled and delighted that you saw fit to join me this morning for this uh, very important word from the Lord and broadcast that's going forth this morning. Amen. And even those that come on at a later time, amen. But once again, I just thank the Lord today for this great gospel and this wonderful word that we're going to be looking at and the warnings that the Lord has uh, uh, set before us this morning as well. Amen. So uh, let's let's go ahead and go right on into our lesson this morning <clears throat> and the trumpet this morning. Excuse me. Let me, <clears throat> excuse me, as always, I want to encourage you to get you a, a good King James Bible, word for word translation. And follow right along this morning. Judge everything I say and, 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 and teach, preach, based upon the, the Word of God. Amen. Not what someone is down the road saying because everybody is saying a lot of different things. Amen. There's a lot of people out there that's competing uh, for your faith. Amen. They're, uh, they're, they're doing a great job in, in a lot of places. Amen. So, here we are this morning. And uh, I began preaching a message Sunday morning. Uh, entitled Beware of the Strange Woman. Beware, and that's, that's taken out of Proverbs, uh, the book of Pro the, the uh, writings of, of Solomon, the son of David, and uh, began in chapter 7, uh, Proverbs chapter 7. <clears throat> However, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to go all the way back to the beginning. I'm going to pick back up uh, probably somewhere around uh, verse uh, 15, 16, or somewhere in that neighborhood. Amen. And, and let me encourage you to go back to uh, Sunday morning's message. It's, it's right. It's still on Facebook. All got to do is just scroll down and find the Sunday morning message. Listen to that. Or you can go over and we have our these messages on Sunday are going out by YouTube as well. And you can go to YouTube. And the best place, the best way I found to do that is just go to our church website, crosswayministries.org. And uh, the, the moment that you open up, it'll show the video player. You can just tap on it, and it'll open up to the archives on YouTube of our Sunday morning messages, and it'll be right there, the last one on the archive, amen. So uh, let me encourage you to do that, and I'm going to pick back up this morning about middle ways of uh, chapter 7, Proverbs chapter 7, amen. And uh, praise God. Uh, once again, it's always so much to say and not enough time to do it. But this morning, let me begin by saying this, amen. War, uh, warnings, the warnings that's going out. I know people say all the time, well, you warn a lot. Well, deception is, is in abundance, amen. And uh, every place that you see in the Word of God, you see of the promises of God, you, you'll find it wrapped up in, in, in warnings, amen. Uh, you, you, just a prime example, you look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, you see there where we, uh, the enmity between us and God has been removed, a relationship has been established with him uh, through the blood of the cross. I mean, that's the speaking of Christ and what he did at Calvary, speaking of the cross plainly there. Amen. Apart from that, there is no relationship uh, the, with God. Amen. There's no relationship with uh, with Christ apart from his atoning work on the cross where he reconciled us. And then just three verses down from that, as it continues to speak uh, in verse 20 and 21 and 22 about the benefits and the blessings that comes from the, the blood of the cross the sacrifice of Jesus. And in verse 3, just three verses down, there's a warning there. There's a big if. It says, if you you have these things, if uh, you continue in the faith, established in this truth, stabilized, established, steadfast, remain steadfast in this truth, <clears throat> and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. So with every blessing, every great promise, we see quickly a warning, amen, but oftentimes the warnings are being avoided, amen, and uh, so that's, the, you know, that's what the Lord laid on my heart sometime back to do this broadcast. I didn't just jump out of bed one day and say, well, I'm going to do a broadcast, call it the Tuesday morning trumpet and so on and so forth. I'm not coming to you this morning trying to say you anything. Don't have anything to sell. Everything I have is given to me freely. That's what I come to give you this morning. Amen. And, uh, so 
the only thing I come to present you this morning is what the Lord has laid upon me and burdened me with this morning for the sake of the, uh, of the church, amen, for the sake of the, the body of Christ, amen. But uh, uh, the, the, the warnings, amen, are, are avoided by many, which is actually, when you look over in, in a good examples, Jeremiah chapter one, verse 10, he spoke about, you know, the pulling down and the rooting out and the destroying uh, of the polluted words of error. And uh, so, uh, you know, if, if the warnings was not important, we would not hear the apostle Paul in, in Colossians chapter one and verse 28 say it like this he said we preach and we warn and we teach amen uh warning and warning and 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 and, and of false error and false doctrine is not being unkind like so many would say when people come up and say well you know you're unkind and you warn too much what what they're really doing is throwing up defense uh, you, you, because you know those warnings are touching something that they wish to to hold on to and are attempting to try to uh, uh, maintain and protect and hold on to is touching their golden cow or is is touching that uh, uh, that idol that uh, has that they're looking to something that even has been set next door right next to the cross amen but you can't you know, they claim the cross, but then they got uh, this herd of golden cows running around in the pasture, amen. You can't set anything up next to the cross. Everything else uh, has to be rooted up and, and, and thrown out and, and has to be destroyed, amen. Just destroying the polluted words of error, amen. But uh, the Bible actually teaches, amen, that uh, uh, the, the, it's the good minister that warns, amen. And you see that in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. If you tie 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and 6 together, you see that God says that the good minister warns, amen. The good minister warns. Yes, just like Paul said, Colossians 1 and 20, we preach we warn and we teach, amen. And, but uh, the, we preach and we warn and we teach every man in all wisdom. And that all wisdom, amen, is the cross, amen. There at the cross is where we receive all things that pertains to life in God. And this is all wrapped up in the cross, the wisdom of God, the power of God. And we must know these things, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but once again, uh, if we leave the warning out of our gospel presentation, we have not yet been set free ourselves, amen. The reason we, we uh, step around and walk around and hold back and withhold the warning is because we really have not yet been set free ourselves and given the liberty to warn uh, the, the church and the body of Christ because we're actually... Uh, holding on to some of those things ourselves. But when we've truly been set free by the blood of the cross, by the lamb, amen, and his sacrifice, when we've truly been set free, we, we, we will no longer be hesitant or backwards about warning the people, those that are close to us, those who are far away, those that love us or those that dislike us, it will it will be it will be no difference. It will make no difference, amen, because now we're operating from a crucified life. We've been crucified with Christ and we're dead to all of that uh, old man and old stuff where we're trying to maintain a personal reputation, amen, and, and trying to look good among the brethren or, or, or the church world or all the world itself. Uh, whatever the motive is, it's, it's, it's wrong, amen, if we're not engaged in warning the people of, uh, of the error that's all around us. And then in the midst of all of that, we're pointing the people to the cross, which is the answer, amen, hallelujah. 
Amen. The, the Bible teaches once again that it's a good minister of Jesus Christ that warns. Amen. And, and uh, you know, the, the reason that I see that a lot of people hold back uh, in their warnings is that they are they experience all of these excuses that are thrown up by everyone. Amen. They And then they're afraid of offending someone. They don't want to offend those that are closest to them. Amen. And, and so they want to maintain those relationships so they hold back the warnings. Amen. But uh, God is not accepting. He's not uh, at the judgment seat. He's not going to accept any excuses. He's not going to accept uh, I'm offended. Amen. The only thing that God's accepting today is I need to repent. Amen. I'm offended is not holding up today. There's no legs there for that to stand on. Amen. People just simply need to, to hear what the, the, the Spirit of the Lord is saying in these last days as it pertains to the truth and God's warnings that's going out in a great way. Uh I say great way, it is going out, and when it does go out, it's a very great thing, but few are hearing, and uh, many are turning away, amen, it's, it's interesting, once again, uh, this morning, I find myself thinking about the, the words of Christ, how he said there would be uh, many that would come in this final hour, it's in Mark, Matthew chapter 24 and 5, and Mark 13 and 6, Luke chapter 21 and verse 8, Amen. Trying to bend down, read my own writing. Amen. He said, this is always just stuck with me. Jesus said, many shall come in my name. Amen. Not necessarily saying I am Christ, but they would come saying I am of Christ. God sent me when God didn't send them. Amen. And they shall come in my name and shall deceive many. Amen. So yes, the truth needs to be preached. Cross needs to be preached as we're preaching the cross and the truth that Jesus spoke about. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We need to warn the people as well. Amen. Just as Paul did once again, over and over and over. Amen. We're not of those that draw back were of those who continue to believe that goes on, that continues to believe on, even unto the saving of the soul all the way to the end when he would say, I've kept the faith. Let that be of us because the enemy wants to move you away from the faith uh, that, that God gave us which when he gave us the, the object to put it in, he gave us the faith and he gave us the object to put it in and that object is Christ and him crucified. The enemy is working overtime to try to move you away from that place and that faith, amen, and cause you to embrace and look to other things. So we need to be aware of these things, amen. But thank God today. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for the wonderful work of Christ on the cross today where Christ suffered the penalty of sin on the cross which brings us joy and peace today in the midst of a world gone mad, in the midst of a church gone to sleep, glory to God I, here we stand with our eyes wide open beholding Christ and him crucified and what he did there for us glory to God that he would lay down his life and, and, and shed his precious blood that we might be redeemed and reconciled and, and justified and given a position of sanctification, though there's an ongoing work on our condition, present condition as well, amen, and then the, this, we had this great treasure this morning, which is Christ in us, all of these, the great inheritance, and that inheritance is Jesus Christ, we have all of that and so much more, Romans 8 and 32, Amen. All things been given all through Christ crucified, been given all things freely. Amen. That pertains to life and godliness. Everything we need is wrapped up in the cross this morning. Amen. So why wouldn't I be determined to know nothing else except Jesus Christ in him crucified? Amen. Once again, and I've already uh, pointed us there earlier, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Enmity been removed. Now we can uh, come to the Father. We've been reconciled. Now we can cry, Abba, Father, Father, Father. Amen. We've been brought into the household of God through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Having been made peace through the blood of his cross by him, Christ, 
and him crucified. Amen. By him to reconcile all things to himself. That we became. This is beautiful. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 and 47, there at Calvary on that day, that moment, then when we put our faith in what he did there, his finished work on the cross, the work of the cross, what he had his faith in, glory to God, amen, there he became the last Adam and the second man, which is the Lord from heaven, the Bible says, at the cross, Christ to those who believe, amen, at the cross, Christ became the ending at the cross. When we put our faith there, he became the ending to the fallen sons of Adam, and he became the fountainhead, or the head, the fountainhead, or the father of a new race of born-again believers, amen. He is truly, uh, as he said of himself, he is the beginning and the end. He ended the old at Calvary and began began the new. Hallelujah. I love the new. Out of Adam and into Christ. Out of the old fallen race and fallen household of Adam. Amen. No longer among the fallen sons of Adam. Amen. But we be sons of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Adam was the father of the la the lost race of fallen sons, but Jesus became the head of a new creation. Amen. The fountainhead of a new creation. Amen. In him, glory to God, in him where we become once again the sons of God who can now cry, Abba, Father. Glory to God. What a great Savior. What a great salvation we have in him. Out of Adam into Christ. God could not bless the household of Adam. It had fallen. Amen. Glory to God. But in the household of God, which is us being in Christ, baptized into him. Romans 6 and 3. Now we have all the benefits. We've been made heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ because of our new position in Christ. Amen. Through the cross and our faith or understanding, I must say it, our faith is not in that position. Glory to God. That's this great benefit that we now have, but our faith is in what placed us there, put us there, which is the cross, the blood of his cross. Hallelujah. The sacrifice of Jesus. We can't say it enough, amen, because the enemy is saying so much out there to, to lure the body away to other things. So those that preach the cross, don't be afraid to say the cross. Does it matter what their faces look like? Does it matter what they say on fake book? Amen. Had one or two th come at me yesterday. Amen. They're, they're always throwing rocks at the lamb. Amen. But those that come and say, well, you don't have to mention the cross all the time. Paul did. I prove that in his word. I do. Amen. We, we mention the cross all the time. We're not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. It's what brought us into uh, the the the, this place of righteousness that we have today in Christ, amen? So don't be ashamed of the gospel, amen? Don't be ashamed to uh, uh, to say cross. Don't be ashamed to, uh, to identify that you're determined to know nothing save Jesus Christ in him. If you can't mention the cross, you're not determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ. You're, you're, there's a determination there for you to know something other than that. Don't be influenced by the naysayers and the scoffers and the deceivers and, and, and all of these that are at work out there today. Don't be influenced by the influencers, amen. Be influenced by the word of God, amen, and, and continue on in what the Bible is pointing us to all the time. And if we're a Bible preacher, we should be pointing the people to what the word of God is pointing us to all the time, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm just going to have to move on down now for 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. I love this, 1 Corinthians 4 and 17, uh, because of the trouble in the church in Corinth. Paul said, for this cause, because they need to hear, they need to be reminded of what they had in Christ. They need to be reminded of the gospel. They need to be, uh, they need to be reminded. They need to be warned, amen. They need to be reestablished 
in the faith that God gave us in the beginning. 1 Corinthians 4 and 17, For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy, amen, who is my beloved son, speaking in the faith, amen. Paul fathered him in the faith, amen, brought him to Christ. In, 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 or in the message of the cross, amen. Paul's message, let's say it like that, amen. Who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, amen. Now we're going to see a contrast to this in just a moment uh, in Proverbs where it speaks about a young man, amen. But he's not faithful in the Lord, amen. He's, he's lured away by, by false doctrine and false teachers and the deception of the enemy, amen. But here Paul identifies with with Timothy, amen, as being faithful in the Lord. And here's why. Here's why Paul is identifying with Timothy. Uh, and he would do the same with others, Titus and others that uh, that were brought to Christ through his ministry, amen. But he's faithful in the Lord. And, and here is why, because he, when he comes, he's not going to come with his own agenda. He's not going to come with another message backed by another spirit and another gospel, but he's going to come bringing you the gospel that Jesus Christ gave me. Speaking of Paul, amen. So, he says he's going to bring now this is this is a church that brought in by the message of the cross they need to be reminded of what they had in the beginning they've been influenced by these false apostles they've been influenced by false brethren amen who come in with the appearance of being brethren and apostles but they were false Amen. What is it that makes them false and false brethren? They're embracing and pointing the people to something other than the message that Paul brought, which is the cross. Amen. So he said, Timothy is, is he's faithful in the Lord. Amen. He doesn't take the epistles and the letters that I had him to be delivered. He doesn't take it, remove pages, and change the words and twist it to make it mean what he desires or, or, or what someone else desires. Amen. But he maintains he maintains the purity of Paul's letters, just as Paul wrote it. Amen. The, to maintain the correct meaning. Amen. That 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 was the actually come from heaven, but it was inspired uh, upon Paul to write the things that that he received from the Lord. Amen. And he said, "Who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways?" Amen. Of my, what is Paul's ways. Well, you can take two or three verses if you need something real quick. To, you know, uh, his ways is that I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's certainly the way uh, of the apostle Paul. Amen. Uh, we preach Christ crucified. Amen. That was the way of the apostle Paul. We preach Christ crucified. Well, I'm determined. I, de I have determined. I have made a, a, a righteous legal decision. Amen. Uh, declaration, I determine. I determine, determine within my spirit. And from that, amen, I can say that I am determined. Amen. I am determined to know nothing save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That was Paul's way. Amen. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. And I can go on and on and on. Amen. So that is Paul's ways. He will bring you to that place where you can find power, the work of God, amen, to, to, to settle all of these differences and all of this uh, false uh, uh, thinking and influence, amen, and, and come back to the, the, the proper place, Christ and him crucified, amen. He will bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ. I think that's interesting, amen. Paul said he didn't say that it was just my ways, 
speaking of those things of a mere mortal man, which is what he was, but he said, my ways are be in Christ. It's all wrapped up in Jesus. My ways are in Christ and what he did at Calvary. Not in Adam, in Christ. My ways are in Christ. No longer in Adam. My ways are no longer in Adam. Well, on the road to Damascus, he, when the Lord got his attention in a great miraculous way, Amen. The uh, Paul rose up and said, "Now or Saul at the time said, the Lord, what would you have me to do?' Everything changes at the cross when we believe it and anchor our anchor the faith that God gave us right there. Amen. Out of the old, Amen. Dead to the old and brought into the new. Amen. And, and He said He will bring you to remembrance of My ways, which be in Christ. Paul even denounced." His old ways in the Jewish religion. You can see that in Galatians chapter one, Galatians chapter one and verse thirteen. He referred to in times past when he was in the Jews' religion. He's no longer in religion. He's in relationship with the Father through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. But look what he says behind that. He says he Timothy going to bring you into remembrance of my ways. As I teach everywhere in every church, amen, Timothy is going to bring you into remembrance of my ways, which is preaching the cross all the time for everything, amen, as, as I, just like I have in the past, just like I do today, and just like I will tomorrow, as I teach everywhere and in every church. That means Paul preached the cross all the time, amen, for everything, no matter what that need is, glory to God, amen. So, man, praise God, we're at Adam, we're in Jesus Christ, praise God. So, so, so let me, let me, let me stay with that for just a moment, amen, and we, we see, in, in to, 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 bright witness to being out of Adam and into Christ. Let's let's look real quickly to Romans chapter six, verse three through five. And, and he says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death, placed into his death with Christ. When he died on the cross, we died there with him. That's what removed us from Adam, a death to that old nature, death to that old way, death to that old man. And then we are raised up with Christ, in Christ, baptized into him at the cross by faith, raised up a new creation, a new creatures, the Bible, the word the Bible um, uses, which is a new creation now in Christ Jesus, out of Adam, into Christ, amen, hallelujah, don't you know this, amen, we've been, we've been baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death, that's where it took place, by faith, Amen. Verse 4, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. Amen. That reminds me once again of 2 Corinthians 4.11, where it says the Holy Spirit is always presenting us, handing us over, bringing us to death. Amen. So, because from that place, that standpoint of faith in his death, baptized into his death, from that place, amen, the, the image of Christ is manifested within us. Amen. Handed over, presented to death, so that the life of Christ might be manifested in our mortal flesh, in our mortal body, the life of Christ, amen. He, he became a quickening spirit, amen, to us on the cross, amen, out of, out of the household of death and brought into, amen, the household of life for the Romans 8 and 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me. I didn't make me. He made me when he recognized my faith in the proper object, which is the death of Christ, amen, and, and understanding that I died there with him to take on the new creation, the new man in Christ Jesus, amen. Romans 8 and 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. 
Amen. Has made me free. Amen. There's no such thing as a salvation unto unto sinning. Amen. There's no such thing as a sinning salvation. Amen. The Bible over and over repeatedly, amen, tells us, amen, we, uh, that I have been made free uh, from the law and the dominion of sin through the cross, through the blood of the Lamb, by faith alone, and what he there did, praise God. And it says in... in um, uh, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, God did it, amen, by the by the power of God, by the glory of the Father, even so we, even so we, amen, even so we. Now, I, I still have 2 Corinthians 4, 11 on my mind, amen, delivered unto death so that the life of Christ might manifest in our mortal body. Even so we should walk, in newness of life, amen. We shouldn't walk like an Egyptian anymore, amen. We shouldn't walk like those uh, defeated sons of Adam, amen. We, uh, we're no longer victims of sin. We're no longer victims, but now we're victorious, have complete victory in Jesus Christ. What a great gospel we have, amen. And, and he said there, even so we should now... We've been given the ability and the power, amen, to be able to do that, provided we maintain our faith in the cross, what gives the latitude for the Holy Spirit to work in our life and carry these things out and make it real to us, amen. And he said, we should walk in newness of life, verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Raised up into newness of life, a new creation where Christ is the fountainhead in the head of the many sons that he has brought to the Father through the cross and our faith in the cross alone. Amen. But he goes on to say, let's settle this thing in verse 11, what God is saying. Let's, let's sum it all up, take in consideration, know that everything that you have, that you have heard, amen, is true because the word of the Lord is right and all of God's works are done in truth, amen, Psalms 33 and 4, the word of the Lord is right, amen, let's believe, let's understand and believe that what it says and what it means is right today to us and for us, amen, and, and that's where a lot of people is lacking, let me, let me hold that for just a moment. Amen. But he said in verse 11, if you go over, so much good there, but we're going to go over to verse 11. Uh, he said that likewise, amen, uh, reckon, amen, it's an accounting term, amen. I, I've heard that many times said in that fashion. Look it up one day and lo and behold, it's an accounting term. It means to sum up everything and, and, and let this be the sum total, amen, and, and consider it to be right and this is your answer. Amen. Likewise, reckon. Let it be settled. Amen. Reckon. You believe what it's saying. Reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Speaking of what he did at Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. And then if you move over real quickly to Romans 6 and 17, it's Paul is shouting over there. Amen. And he said, but God be thanked. Amen. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, no longer servants of sin, no longer under the dominion and the power of sin, but you were in times past. Amen. We're dead to all of that when we became dead to the fallen sons of Adam through the cross. Amen. There Jesus be truly became, the as he declared himself to be, the beginning and the ending. Amen. He ended the old at Calvary cross and he brought us into the new amen a new beginning he's the he's the the beginning and the ending and everything ended at the cross all of everything pertaining to the fall amen and brought us into the 
new. Amen. Praise God. I like new. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he said there, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But listen to this. He said, but you have obeyed. Our obedience is to the faith from the heart. Amen. If we will obey, if we'll, if we'll be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified, anchor our faith in, in that death, Christ and him crucified, identify with that death. Not only was he crucified there to make atonement, but we were crucified with him. That's God's wisdom. Amen. He removed us from everything that the enemy would, would use to destroy us. He, that we're dead to sin. We're dead to the law. We're dead to sin. Satan. Yes, amen. We're dead even if we apply it and deny ourselves. We're even dead to our own selves, dead to anything that the enemy would use to destroy us, dead to this world, amen. Uh, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified to this world and the world crucified with me. That's the reason I, I glory in the cross, Galatians 6 and 14. I glory, God forbid, that I should glory in anything save the cross of Christ where I'm uh, crucified to this world and this world crucified to me. It all took place at Calvary, complete victory, but our responsibility is to maintain our our faith, which is the faith that God's given us, amen, to the object that into or, or at the object that he gave us, which is Christ and what he did at Calvary, amen. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. That's what Timothy is bringing the people to remember us remembrance to that which was delivered to them in the beginning amen that that form of doctrine is the the letters and the writings and the teachings of the apostle paul amen what he taught what he preached and what he would warn of and the things that would happen uh the apart from that that great gospel, amen. The only thing that's going to take place apart from that is death and destruction, amen. Spiritual death and destruction. That puts you on the, the, the highway to hell, amen. Hallelujah. We're, we're on the path of the just, amen, that grows brighter and brighter until that perfect day. We're on the, the, we're on the road to eternal life, amen. Praise God, amen. So you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, amen, uh, which is the message of the cross. So let's go quickly over here before I get too far away from this. And I could go on and on. Uh, right there, amen. But let's now let's pick up over here in Proverbs, amen. And, and this is speaking about the Pro Proverbs chapter 7. And uh, uh, this is a contrast uh, to what I've just presented. I presented to you the truth, amen. Paul said, We preach, we warn, and we teach. Don't leave off the warning aspect, amen. Uh, just because you, you have, you know, I, if I warn, you know, it's going to include buddies and pals and friends and those that, you know, I really don't want to be uh, separated from people. That's the big problem people want to maintain those all relationships that they really should not be engaged in. Amen. Paul would say these uh, that liken unto this strange woman, which represents error and false doctrine, that which is false, and the, the schemes and strategies of the enemy, which is Satan, amen. Uh, Paul would say, even, and we're going to see it right here in, in Proverbs chapter 7, they have a form of godliness, but they have denied the power thereof. And he said, amen, from such turn away, amen. He said to turn away from these. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. They have a form. They outwardly, they have an outward show of godliness, but they deny the power of God for true godliness, true holiness, righteousness. They have denied the cross, amen. The cross is not the emphasis, 
in their in their message, Amen. They don't they don't believe what whatever you believe is what you're gonna preach. Whatever you believe, whatever you're hearing is what you believe, Amen. And whatever you believe is what you're going to preach, Amen. Those that that believe and know that the cross is answered, that's what they're gonna be determined to know, uh, and, and they'll be putting pushing everything to the side like Gideon, Amen. And he said, but they're denying the power thereof, and he said, from such turn away. And I have to say this, you know this. This, this just mentioning the cross every once in a while is nothing more than bait on the hook. You know, Satan is subtle. He knows what he's doing. We have to be wise and be made aware of these things and be warned of the strategies of the enemy, amen, because he's out there painting up polishing up and shining up everything that is wrong and then he goes about dirtying up the truth that's what he does amen he polishes up a lie and he dirties up the truth amen but let's just uh let's pick up let's pick up in in verse 18 amen i think i doubt if i remember right sunday morning uh, i dealt with 16 and 17 well, let's let's go to 17 here this this uh speaking of this strange woman don't forget is is speaking of error false doctrine the strategies and schemes of the enemy uh, amen and this young man that's being spoken of here is not talking about uh he's young in age but he's he's not mature in the word amen and I think about that today. All right, now let me pause right here. I've got to I've got to say this while it's on my mind. I believe the Holy Spirit is prompting me to say this. For the past twenty years, one of the one of the phrases that I that I have heard over and over and over, Amen, is you your faith, your your victory is not in the Word of God. And that is true. Our victory is in the cross. Amen. We have to understand that. That's true. That's right. That's what the Word of God teaches. That's what the Bible teaches us. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, our victory is not in our fruit. Our victory is not in our doings and good works, no matter what that is, in associations with big ministries and ministers and all of that. Y'all hear me say these things over and over and over, and I will continue to do that until you until you either get on board or you just completely shut me off, just like they did with Noah. They moved to the other side of the mountain so they couldn't hear the, the voice of the righteous man and God's word for that people in that day and time. It's the same thing today. Jesus said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be uh, in the days of the coming of Son of Man of the Son of Man. That's where we are, people. Amen. Or they're, they're just wrapped up in their own self their own life and they're turning away from the truth that they need to hear and this is a warning that's going out this morning amen but uh, we've heard that consistently and persistently over the years you know your your victory is in the cross and that is right not making little of that at all but then behind that amen you know you, you know, don't, uh, you, you, your victory is not in the, in the reading of the Bible instead of the Word, amen. We hear that over and over and over, that what has happened because of that, and I'm seeing this, I know what I'm talking about. You might bark at it, that's fine. You just keep barking till you get a sore throat, amen. We're going to preach in it till, till, till we can't preach anymore, amen. But so what that has done, it's caused a whole generation of people to lay their Bibles down and just listen to people that says your victory's in the cross. And now they're saying, you know, hear what we have to say. Listen to us. You know, who do you think you are? Amen. What has qualified you? Because they've been telling us all along to lay your Bible down because victory ain't in it. Just hear what we have to say. Listen to our words. Follow us. Send us money. Keep us on, uh, uh, keep us going. Keep us on the airways. But hear what we have to say. And then if you uh, uh, rebuke that or correct that in any way, then here they are. They say, well, now who in the world do you think you are to correct us? Amen. Oh, what pride uh, that is. So for someone to say that, amen, they're protecting error. They're, they're, they're trying to guard a golden cow that has been raised up in their midst. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So instead of constantly saying, well, now search these things out in the word, look into your word. Amen. Look into the Bible. See, I still have my Bible. I never put it on the shelf. Amen. I'm still, I'm still searching the word of God. I still have what God says in the written word. I still have the Holy Spirit revealing to me that the, the word of the Lord is right. Amen. And, and because we know the truth, amen, and we are maturing, we have an Arrived. Don't misunderstand me. That's not what I'm saying. We are all students of the word of God. That's what makes us disciples. Jesus said, if you're my disciple, you will continue in my word. Amen. I have a Bible and I take this word, this Bible and I judge everything that I'm told and that I hear according to the word of God. I'm not perfect. I'm not looking for anyone to be perfect. Amen. I understand that, but I'm also not allowing that to be an excuse. Amen. For my ears. Amen man. Hallelujah. If, if, if what they're saying is not pointing us all the time, Paul said everywhere in every church, if what I'm hearing is not pointing me to the exclusive message of the cross for whatever I have need of, does it make any difference what it is, amen? I'm turning it off, amen, because all I want to hear, all I want to enter into my heart and my life, amen, is the words of the cross, the preaching of the cross, the teaching of the cross, because that's the only thing that will benefit me. But we don't lay our... Bible down. We don't lay down the word of God and just listen to other preachers and teachers. That is what will cause you to be unskillful in righteousness. That's what will cause you to be uh, far below where you need to be in your understanding and maturity of the word of God. We are to grow in grace and the knowledge of of our Lord and Savior, speaking of Jesus Christ, who he is and what he accomplished for us at Calvary's cross, amen. And I say it all the time, those that know the truth know who's telling the truth, amen. Hallelujah, amen. So let's let's go back to uh, uh, Proverbs chapter seven and verse 17. And notice, this, it, let's look at verse 14. This, this false doctrine, represented by this strange woman is going to come and say like she did, I have a peace offering, but she, she doesn't come with a sacrifice. She doesn't come with a burnt offering, which is a type of the cross. Amen. She comes with saying, peace, peace, love, love. She comes, that's the key phrases that's being uh, promoted in the church that's leaving the truth and leaving the message of the cross. Their emphasis is away from the cross, which is an offense to the flesh and all of the things that the enemy used uh, to destroy us, amen. So the, the key phrases is that, you know, we preach what you're preaching, but we just come about it from a different angle. We use other words. We use the word grace. We use the word love. We come with peace, peace. Amen. Let there be peace in their body. Let there be peace among the brethren. And because all you're doing is preaching the exclusive message of the cross, you're causing trouble in the body. Amen. When that is the, the really the only place that you can find peace, remember? Amen. Not just with God, but with the brethren. Amen. The cross is the unifier. We're unified with God uh, through Christ and his blood. The enmity has been removed move peace made with the father uh, colossians chapter 1 and verse 20 and there do, are we united with true brethren amen all of the brethren romans 6 and 3 don't you know that so many of us were baptized into jesus christ were baptized into his death amen i don't have fellowship among others apart from the cross. Amen. The cross is what unites the body because there we're united as brethren with the Father through the blood of the Lamb. I hope I said that uh, clear enough for us this morning. Amen. But, but she used these words in verse 17, uh, 17, I have a, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloe and, and cinnamon. Now, this strange woman wants you to, to leave your husband that you have in Jesus Christ and come lay down with her. 
and commit spiritual adultery. That's what it's all about. But she uses these words that uh, in, in Psalms 45 and 8 that identify with, with Christ and what he did at Calvary and the sweet smell, the sweet smelling aroma, amen, that, uh, of, of what God smells in his nostrils of the sacrifice, amen. These, these spices, if I can call it that, these are those things the that would be used likened unto em, embalming as we know it today? They would be placed upon the the body, amen. They were they were they these perfumes were uh, adorned the body of Christ. So see, it, it speaks. Uh, of of death, it speaks of the cross. It speaks of Christ in Him crucified. Amen. That's what it's pointing to. But however, she uses these phrases and these terminologies to draw this young man into her bed of adultery. You see, Amen. And that's what Satan does. Amen. He uses scripture. He uses things that are, are right to a degree. Amen. You, we've had it, heard it said, and we continue to say it. Error rides in on the back of truth. The enemy uses those things to bring us and lure us over into uh, to, to the bed of deception, into the net of deception. So let's, uh, having understood that, let's pick up uh, in verse 18. In verse 18 there it says, and come, this is the strange woman to this young man, amen. And he says, and th that young man is, is exactly where the majority of the church is. They laid the Bible down. They've been coached or, or into doing that, amen. And now they're unskillful in the word of God, amen. Uh, the, the, they didn't study to show themselves approved unto God, a workman that needed to not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Listen, uh, child of God, pick that Bible up, pick the word of God up again and begin to, to, to study it and see that the word of God is pointing us to the cross for our every need and our complete victory there in what Jesus did at Calvary. Pick up the word of God. Don't be as this, this immature young man who finds himself now being led into the bed of the enemy, amen, that wants to devour, wants to that that she presents herself error presents itself as being concerned for you error presents itself as being uh with wrapped up in flattery amen it sounds good it sounds right it looks good it smells good all of that uh the enemy knows how to 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 carry this deceptive work out but we don't have to fall victim to hear the warnings don't, you know, preaching the truth is not enough in the sense, amen, that we need to also hear the warnings as well. Or Paul would not have said, ladies and gentlemen, he wouldn't have said, we preach, we warn, and we teach. Stop turning off the warnings. Heed the warnings that are going forth in this final hour in the church age, because in the church age, because it's for your benefit and it identifies with the love of God towards you. Because the Bible says that He chastens, He corrects, He reproves, He rebukes even those whom He loves, and He works through ministers godly men and women of God to carry that out, amen. So don't turn off that minister that's warning you of the devastation of a departure and leaving this faith in the cross, amen. Leaving that, leaving the very thing that you were set, reconciled and brought into in the beginning, amen. All right, verse 18, here's the, the deception, Amen. Here's this uh, strange woman, false doctrine, says, come now. So, you know, the, the, over Revelations, the Bible says uh, the, the spirit and the bride, the Holy Spirit and the bride say, come. Amen. Come and drink of the water of life freely, which speaks of the cross. The Holy Spirit and the bride, the church should be uh, heralding 
come, but where our message is coming to the cross, amen. Jesus said, if I be lifted up through the preaching of the cross, I will draw all men unto me. No one's coming to him apart from the cross, and our, our involvement in that is, is the preaching of the cross, which we're only, day, we're only able to do from the standpoint of death, amen. Those that are crucified are able to preach the truth. Those that are crucified are able to preach the cross, amen. So here's what the, the, the strange woman, the wicked woman says, but she's not presenting herself as that, amen. Come and let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace, that means comfort ourselves, well, if you'll come to me, I'll comfort you. I flatter you. Amen. I speak vain words, though they're they're not presented as being vain, but they're empty. They man, they they don't they don't contain the the word of life. They don't contain the message of the cross. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace, comfort ourselves with love. Say, man, plural. Amen. Now I'm just going to read strictly directly from the, the 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 notes right here amen in these false doctrines love amen is and that's what the 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 strange woman represents false doctrine false teachers amen something of it's anything other than the cross is false doctrine anything i don't care how lovely pretty painted up it is amen he said and he says in the note here says in these false doctrines love the word love love is usually center stage the word loves plural is also used because it is it is plural, which means going in many directions and seeking many affections when the love of God, the true love of God, the agape love of God is pure and singular. Amen. Pure and singular. Amen. In other words, the love of God is only going to be found in one place, which is at Calvary's cross. That's where the the image has been removed with a relationship with God. That's the only way, that, the only place we can experience the love of God, and the only way that we can express the true love of God toward men. So the deception is here. Amen. Come on over to where we are. We will love you. We're not going to present to you that exclusive message of the cross. We're not determined to know nothing save Jesus Christ and him crucified over here because see ever the, the work of the, the strategy of the enemy is to remind you that the cross is actually offending you but it's supposed to do that. It, the offense of the cross is doing a work within us. The wrecking ball uh, of the Holy Spirit Spirit is now is now working in our life to move out uh, the remnants of the old and to uh, cause us to walk and and, and, ex and express more and more the image of Christ in our life. You see, it's an ongoing work. Amen. It's an ongoing work from the standpoint of death, our faith in the cross. Amen. It's an ongoing work. Amen. Now the Holy Spirit's working in our life. But the enemy says you don't have to endure all of that. Just come on over. We will love you. We will surround you. We'll pray for you and, and, and all of that. Amen. But it's, it's the work of the enemy. It's, it's the work of this strange woman. It's the work of false doctrine. And all, many are lured to this climbing of Fool's Mountain. And then when they get to the top, there's going to be a drove of people there that's going to uh, make you feel good and comfortable about your rebellion and your leaving of the truth. Amen. It happens every time. Amen. So, Come, let us take our fill of love unto the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love, amen. And uh, once again, the love is the focus, amen. And uh, But all right, so let's move down to verse 19. I think you see that. I sure hope you do, amen. And he says in verse 19, look at it says here, and it says, for the good man is not at home. He is gone, uh, he is gone on a long journey. 
Amen. Now let me read the note here again because I love this. Amen. And it says the good man is the same as the watchman or the minister. At least it should be. And the, the good man should be the watchman, the minister, or the pastor. Amen. The overseer of God's flock. Amen. But here it says he's gone on a long journey. Amen. He, in other words, instead of, and I like this, what he says, and it's, he should be earnestly contending for the faith. Jude verse three, amen. But in fact, other things have demanded his attention. Uh, how, how so sadly uh, true of so many modern preachers, amen. They left their post. They didn't hold right. They, they, they were allured and distracted, amen, mainly by money. Their, their quest was to, to gather up money instead of watching over the flock. Let's see what it says here in my notes. The, the good man, is, I'm still at verse 19. The good man is the one of Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. How many times have we been going? Going back there, Acts 20 and 28, who is told to take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. This is speaking to the, to the pastors, the overseers in the body of Christ, amen, that God has set in place, amen, the, the watchman who should be watching over the flock and seeing the, the strange movements in, the, in Christianity in the modern day, and putting his, the trumpet to his lips and, sta and sounding a warning instead of just uh, sitting there and watching things go on, watching the sheep being devoured, and watching uh, men rise up among us to, uh, to, to make a following of themselves instead of pointing to the, to, to the good shepherd and pointing to the, 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 over, to the one who died on the cross to save us. The good man is the one of Acts chapter 20 and verse 28 who is told to take heed therefore unto yourselves unto all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the, the, the church of God. Amen. That means to tend to like a shepherd. Amen means to tend to, to tend to the flock like a shepherd, feeding the flock, amen, presenting to them the gospel, preaching the cross, warning the flock, amen. Uh, the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, which, speaking of the church, the flock, which he has purchased with his own blood, amen. Oh, let, 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 that, let that shake us to the core, amen, that we are as preachers and pastors and overseers and bishops and, and these things. We are these things. The Holy Spirit has put us in this place. He gave us to the body for the benefit of the body, which he purchased with his own blood. And God forbid that we, speaking of preachers and pastors and shepherds, under shepherds, God forbid that we would be focused on raising money and, and, and doing other things and neglect the body. And that's exactly what's being taught here. And it's so very applicable to where we are today. The emphasis now is more on raising money. Isn't it inter interesting that big ministries and little ministries as well, I don't think... Uh, so any, that has anything to do with it, amen? But the emphasis is, you know, telling people, well, give to this ministry, whatever ministry that is, and just, you know, pleading to people to give begathons, amen, give money to this ministry so that we can continue to take the gospel throughout the world. But what they're taking to the world is not the gospel because the emphasis has been shifted from the cross to something else. And it makes that minister and ministry, no matter who they are, I don't care, amen, it makes them among these strange women because they're luring people away to something else. Amen. And so he says, Come and let us take our fill of loves into the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves for the good man. <coughs> In other words, I'm here for you, the, the false doctrine is saying. Amen. And, and, but the good man, he, he, here he is, he's left his post. And he said, The good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. 
Amen. He, he's not holding his post. He's not watching over the flock. Amen. He's retreated to doing other things that seem to be important to us. Amen. Or to, to him. That seem to be important to him. Amen. So the, the, the enemy wants you to get all wrapped up in doing other good things so that you'll leave emphasis on the cross because the cross is the only place that he is defeated. The cross is what crushed his head. So no wonder his ministers who present themselves as ministers of light, amen, they come to you presenting themselves as ministers of light. Jesus said, many will come in my name and deceive many. So they come presenting themselves as ministers of life, light, ministers of, of righteousness, amen, but they're not, amen. They're, they're working under the strategies and the schemes of the enemy. Be aware of these things. Amen. And and he goes on to say there in verse 20, and, and so here we are again. Uh, the, the minister, he, it says he has taken a bag of money with him. Amen. He left the flock and he ran off with a sack of money. And that's happened many years ago, my friend, whether you see it or not. Amen. They, they left the flock because they cease to put emphasis on the cross. When you cease to put emphasis upon the cross totally and completely, you have left your oversight of that flock. You've left a flock. You have left your care of that flock. You have left your post. You have left that place. You're no longer holding that post. You're no longer holding, holding rank. You're no longer standing where God put you in the beginning. You have left the flock. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the appointed day. Amen. The and, and it says in Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 there, amen, and it says it tells us, amen, not to get wrapped up in the cares of this life and in the ways of this world, the cares of this life. See, uh, Satan causes ministers to get wrapped up in, 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 in many different things. And they will actually even label it as being something spiritual, but it's actually Satan drawing them away from where they ought to be standing and in their, their position of watching over the flock. And, and those like this young man, this man, this, this young man, this immature in the Word of God who desperately needs a father to watch over him, a spiritual father, a shepherd, a pastor to watch over him and not only just teach him the truth, but warn him of the error and the dangers of false doctrine in this strange woman. Amen. But with that person removed, amen, this, this young man and the church is just wide open to become a victim of the snare of the fowler. It says, for the good man is not home. He has gone on a long journey. He, is taken, he has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at, the, at, the appointed, at that day appointed, amen, if he ever shows back up. And it says, verse 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Speaking of that, of that young man, with, with the flattering of her lips, she, she forced him. False doctrine is subtle. Amen. Its appeal is tantalizing. And its power is strong because it is the power of Satan. The only thing greater than the power of Satan and the power of enemy. The enemy in darkness is the power of the cross, the, the power of God wrapped up in the cross, amen. The, 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 Colossians 2 and 15 tells us there at Calvary's cross, the powers of darkness, every power, every principality was defeated at Calvary's cross. There and there, there alone. Apart from that, the enemy has just lead way. He, he has open territory to deceive and go about doing his dirty deeds and, and bringing people into a, a, a net of deception. And it says in verse 22, and he goes after her straight way. Amen. The, the why? Because warnings are not being spoken. Amen. 
He's not being warned of this strange woman. He's not being warned of false doctrine. He's not being warned of the power of the enemy. Amen. And it says, and he goes after her straightway as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Amen. In other words, like a oxen who just marches right on in to, to the slaughterhouse. And as those fools who find themselves in shackles, amen, in the correction of stocks, amen, bound by uh, error, bound by false doctrine, bound by these things, you see. And he goes on to say, till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hastes to the snare and knows not that is for him his life. Amen. Like a bird that just marches into a snare, the snare of the fowler, not knowing that this trap has been set, amen, after his life. Not knowing these things. The war, he's not been warned of these things. He's not mature in his understanding because the, the one that should be warning this person of error is actually taking a bag of money, has left his post, watching over this young man, Amen. And he's just opened the door wide open for the enemy to come in and to wreak havoc upon the body of Christ and upon people like this one that's immature in, in, in the truth and the faith. Verse 24 says, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, attend to the words of my mouth, the note says the implication should be clear. The children are those who are true followers of the Lord, irrespective, irrespective they are not immune. In fact, they are the very ones whom the strange woman seeks after. I hear people all the time say, you know, I, I don't need to hear any more about the cross. I know all about the cross. I don't need all of your warnings. I've had them tell me, said, you know, the warnings need to stop. I have repented. Amen. We, 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 the Bible says in Ezekiel, we're to, we're to continue to warn even the righteous man. Amen. We should work. That's a great responsibility that's been placed upon us. We're to warn the wicked. We're to warn the righteous as well. If not, they will succumb, amen, to the strategies of the strange woman. That's what the Bible teaches. Amen. And the note goes on to say, amen, irrespective, they are not immune to the work of the enemy and this strange woman. They're not, you're not immune to that. You say cross, cross all you want to. You're not immune to the strategies of the enemy. And when somebody tells me I know all about the cross, they tell me real quick, real quick they don't know anything about the cross. And it says, in fact, these are the very ones whom the strange woman seeks after. And in verse 25 says, let not your heart decline to her ways. Let not your heart decline to her ways. Reading from the Bible here. Remember earlier we said, God be thanked, amen, that you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. You have continued in it. You have fought the good fight of faith. You maintain your faith in the object that God has given you. You have been determined not only to know Jesus Christ and him crucified, but you have been determined to turn from everything else, even if it offends those that you would desire to embrace, even if it offends close ones, even if it offends family. You've been determined to turn away from everything else and turn away from their influence. So he said there in verse 25, he said, Let not your heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. And I like the note here. Amen. The warning is clear. The warning is clear this morning. The warning is clear, church. So many, it brings tears to my eyes because I know it's true. They'll turn off the warning. They'll turn me off. They'll turn off uh, this warning. and They'll turn off the trumpet. They'll turn us off on Sunday morning because they say all he does is warn. 
and they'll turn it off. And it reminds me once again of those Jeremiah would warn and, and the people would even say, we hear what you're saying, Jeremiah. Amen. But we will not hearken. We will not hearken. And Jesus said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the, in the days of the coming of, Son of, man, of the Son of Man. Uninfluenced by the, the message of the, man, the minister of righteousness. Uninterested by the warnings. Amen. Uh, uninterested in those things. Just going happily on their own merry, merry way. Paying no attention. If anything, they will scoff. Oh, don't pay any attention to that old Noah. Don't pay any attention that old gray-haired man. Amen. He's just delusional. He's building this old big boat out here. Amen. And he's saying that there's going to come a flood. Amen. And he's trying to get us on board that ark. Same way today. Same, just like Jesus said, same way today. When the message of the cross is likened unto that ark that Noah built. Amen. Christ is our modern day ark and the message is come on board, turn from everything else. Time is short. The door, the entrance way is about to be closed and it's starting to rain, folks. It's starting to rain. We're in the very last of the church age. We're in the last of the time and the day in which we know it. Don't turn away from these. These warnings are coming from the heart of God. These warnings are coming from the love of God. Yes, they're being funneled through people, not just me, but through others, amen, who are more concerned with the, the flock and the, in your soul than they are in maintaining relationships with other men. They, God has raised them above that, all of their ambition, all of their desires, all of their will. All of their uh, reputation has been nailed to the cross. Now they just want to be servants of the Lord, to be obedient according to his will in our life now. Amen. Praise God. Raise up others like this in this final hour so that there would indeed be a greater harvest than we presently see. Jesus said, the harvest is great, but the true laborers are few. The only way that you can be a laborer in the harvest is to go forth warning of this era and the strange woman, false doctrine, the schemes, and the strategies of Satan and point people away from that and to the, to, to the, to the cross is their only hope. And he goes on to say, let me read, read it again in verse 25, Proverbs chapter 7. Let not your heart decline to her ways. Go not astray into her path. Verse 26, for she has, listen to this, for she has cast down many wounded. Many have been, their faith, they have been wounded in their walk with the Lord. They have been cast down, for she has cast down many wounded Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Be careful when you think that you stand. As you're setting yourself up for a fall all oh, every day. You know, the, there's so many that, that are they're putting themselves in the... They're, they, they may not say that, but they're declaring all of these different things. They're uh, attempting to speak things into existence, speak things out of existence. They're actually setting themselves up. I said it Sunday morning, setting themselves up as to be little gods. When I, when I need God, I need him. Praise God, I need him every step of the way. I need him always, moment by moment. I need him always working in my life. Hallelujah. Let us be found denying self, denying these things. I'm not a little God. I need God. Denying self and taking up the cross daily, always, and following Jesus. And if we'll do that, he'll lead us all the way home, clinging to the cross every step of the way. That's what the strange woman and, and error and false doctrine and the strategies of Satan wants to lead you away from. For she has cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Many, there, there's been those 
We've seen people come. We've seen people go. I've seen men uh, of God that was preaching this message, the message of the cross, that I looked to at the time as, 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 as strong men in the faith. That was how I saw these men. That's how I'm viewing some today. They, they once appeared to me as strong men in the faith, people that I looked up to, people I admired, people I listened to, but now these same ones I have to turn my ear away from because I can no longer hear what these people, these men are now saying. They were once strong men. Beware when you think it's pride that, that causes this downfall. Beware when you think that, oh, I know all about the cross. I, and who do you think you are to bring correction to us? Who, who do you think you are, just a little old country preacher over here in the cornfield in the heart of the Delta? Who do you think you are to bring us correction? Well, it's the love of God coming out to you and, and being spoken to you, but you turn it away. You won't even except a phone call. <laughs> you turn away from the, from the pleading of the Holy Spirit, from the cry of God. You turn away from God's warnings to continue on in your way, taking the money and run. For she has cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men, have been slain by her. And I'm coming to my last verse. Though I could go on and on. I'm keeping you, I kept you over time this morning already. Listen to what it says in verse 27. Her house, the house of false doctrine. Once again, the emphasis, what is false doctrine? Is anything other than the exclusive message of the cross? And one more time, when you hear people, I don't care, you got JSM lawyers, you got people out there that present themselves to be very knowledgeable. They talk like a Philadelphia lawyer. They present themselves, uh, you know, uh, nice words, very convincing. But when they come to you and tell you you don't have to mention the cross all the time, the emphasis is shouldn't have to be on the cross all the time. There's other things to preach about. There's grace, there's love. There is all of those things, but you're not going to have any of it apart from the cross. To turn from these, does it make any difference who they are? Turn from them. They present themselves with a form of godliness, but they have de they're denying the power thereof. They're denying the power thereof, which is the cross. The Bible says... Turn from these, avoid them. Because it says in Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 27, it says, Her house, false doctrine, is the way to hell. Going down to the chambers of death. Let me read the note here, and then I'm going to let you go this morning. Amen. There is nothing worse than a false way of salvation. The strange woman pictures all such false ways to make it easy to understand false ways pertain to any way that is not Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why shouldn't I be determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified? Church, the alarm is sounding. It's time to wake up. It's time to shake off apathy. It's time to get out of bed with the, the strange woman. It's time to come back to the husband, Jesus Christ, what he did at Calvary, so that you can have all things that pertains to life and godliness, so that you can live both now and forever. Amen. Praise God. Man, you can repent right now. Repent right now. Say, I have erred. I have turned. I have left. You can repent right now. Come back to that first love. Turn from the strange woman and your love for her. Come back to that first love, which is Jesus Christ that you found at Calvary. He died for you. Hallelujah. It's all for you this morning.
Amen. It's all for you. Praise God. Praise God. I have erred. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of this false direction. Forgive me of my influence. I've had to pray this good many years ago. Forgive me, Lord, of influencing people in a lie. Forgive me. From this point forward, from this day forward, I will preach the cross and nothing else. Let that be you today. Be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified and influence now, today, and forever, as long as we're left here, influence the people with the message of the cross, the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for hearing this old preacher this morning. Let me encourage you. I mean, once again, tomorrow night, I'll be joining, teaming up with Brother uh, Jonathan Melton, Brother James Wilcott. We'll be uh, broadcasting the Contending for the Faith broadcast. It airs at 6.30 on uh, Wednesday night. Amen. Those that live in the, the region here of Greenwood, drive on in, come on in and fellowship, be a part of the service at Crossway Ministries five miles west of Walmart on Highway 82. If you're not able to drive in, log on right here at Facebook, on Facebook at 630. I hope to see you then for the Contending for the Faith broadcast. Amen. That's all we do. Praise God. That's all God has raised us up to do. Amen. God bless you. Love you each and every one. Hope to see you then.